Hey guys, it's Alexandra from ilovenots.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a cactus coaster. My inspiration for this was this coffee mug that I got on Etsy. I will link to it in the description. But I kind of really liked the teal with the green. And that's what I was going for even though my colors are a little bit darker. This project is worked with worsted weight yarn. This is We Crochet Dishy and Dishy is a 100% cotton yarn that is color fast and that's why it's my favorite. I don't have to worry about the colors running or bleeding or fading. You can make coasters with acrylic yarn. The only thing that we caution with using acrylic yarn is that acrylic is synthetic and so it's basically plastic. If you put anything too hot on it, it could melt the fibers and burn yourself. If the only thing that you're putting on this coaster is a hot cup of coffee, it's not going to be hot enough to burn your acrylic yarn. I have several coasters that I've made with acrylic yarn. They work for hot and cold. Just don't put anything fresh out of the toaster or fresh out of the oven onto an acrylic uh, coaster. I'm using white. The green is called jalapeno. And the teal is called kenai. K-E-N-A-I. I'm also using my H8 5mm crochet hook. If you work with an acrylic yarn, go up a hook size. Cotton yarn is more relaxed, so it'll come out larger. So, worked in acrylic yarn, it'll be tighter and smaller. I don't have my tape measure, but this is about 4 inches, maybe a touch over 4 inches. This coaster is a form of tapestry crochet. I am not carrying my yarn throughout. I'll show you. I haven't weaved in my ends in yet, but I have a million of them. But I carried what I'm calling bobbins. So I had one white that I worked on this side, then the teal, and then I had another white that I worked over here. I had one green going here and one different, uh, a different green strand going over here. And that's why you don't see floats on the back of my work because I just changed colors. I didn't necessarily make bobbins. I just worked from both ends of my yarn skein. So it's a little bit messy and um, slight yarn tangles did occur. You can fasten off a lot of yarn and tie it into a bobbin to make it easier to work with. But I did not do that. After I finished making my whole coaster, I picked up the yarn and I surface slip stitched around to give it more definition. It looked a little bit messy beforehand, so I wanted to define the edges to give it more shape. And then I finished it off with a reverse single crochet edging. I just love the texture that reverse single crochet gives, but you could also just do a regular single crochet edging all the way around. But I'm going to show you how to make one of these exactly the same way that I did. I'm starting with white. I'm going to, I have the yarn over my fingers, wrap it around my index finger two times, hold it with my thumb and my middle finger. I'm holding tension. Grabbing the loop on the left, up, over the other loop, but not off my finger. And then I'll grab the loop that's on the left now, up, over the other one, and off my finger. So I've created a slip knot. I'll insert my hook right into the loop on my finger. And then I'm going to hold the working yarn with my right hand and pull the tail end with my left, just to tighten to normal tension. I'm going to start with a chain 15. To chain, we just yarn over the, the hook and pull through the loop. So that's one, 
yarn over, pull through, two, I want 15. Now I have 15 chains. I'm going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. We don't count this loop that's on our hook. This is the first loop and this is the second loop. Insert our hook right into the center. Yarn over, pull through. I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops. Single crochet into the next chain. Insert my hook into the center of the chain. Yarn over, pull through, two loops. Yarn over, pull through both loops. I'm going to continue single crocheting down the, uh, down the chains. So I have single crocheted into the second chain and into each chain across. I have 14 single crochets here and we can count that from the top. If you'll notice they look like little V's. There's one, this is the second stitch, the third stitch, the fourth stitch and you keep counting. There's 14 single crochets here in white. The side that we're looking at is the right side of our fabric. So that means that all of our tail ends are going to be on the back side. This side that we're looking at is the right side of the fabric. And this side with all the tail ends, this is the wrong side of the fabric. So the side that we just finished working, that's the right side. That is the side that we'll be facing. We want it to be pretty, so we're going to have all our tail ends be on the back of that. I'm going to chain one and turn. And row two starts with five white single crochets. I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch under both loops and complete a single crochet. And I want five total. This is my fifth one and I'm only working the first half of it so that I can change colors because we're changing colors in the last yarn over of the last stitch. So I'm going to take this out. There's four single crochets there. Insert my hook into the fifth one. Yarn over and pull through. So I have two loops. Now I'm on the last step of the single crochet. This is where I'm going to introduce my new color. So I'm going to put it down for a second so I can grab it. I'm going to be using teal for the planter. I'm going to form a loop. I have a short end here that I will weave in later. And now I'm going to put that loop on my hook. And I'm going to pull it through to complete the single crochet. I'm going to take all my tail ends and bring it to the front. So there's my white one. And then I'm grabbing the short end from the teal. And I'm also bringing that to the front here. And I'm going to be working with this teal yarn. So I'm just holding the tension of my tail ends here with my thumb so that my stitch doesn't become disformed or pull out. I want it to continue to be consistent and even. So I will insert my hook into the next stitch and finish a single crochet. And now I don't need to hold these tail ends because the stitch is complete. I want four teal yarn, uh, 
four teal single crochets in total. We're going to switch our colors the same way. So I'm just going to work three of them. There's one, two, and three. Then I'll insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull through. That's the start of my fourth, but I need to switch back to white. So let me put that down. I am working from one ball of yarn, and this is the white coming from the center. That's the yarn that I started with. I need another ball of yarn to work on this left side here. So I'm going to grab the other tail end that is wrapped around the ball, and I'm going to use that. I'm going to do the same thing I did before in forming a loop. And I have a short tail end that I'll weave in later. And I'm going to put that loop on my hook. And I'm pulling through. And I'll just tighten that teal up a little and bring it to the front. And I'll bring my short tail end of the white to the front as well. Pick up the white, and I'm just holding the tension here of my tail ends. And I'm going to work a single crochet. My stitch secures that so I don't have to hold it anymore, and I'm going to finish off the row. I want five white single crochets, so I have one there. And there's five. Row two is complete. It had five white single crochets, four teal single crochets, five white single crochets. Row three and four are going to be exactly the same. And they're going to be worked with white and teal. So I'm going to use the tails that are here whenever I need to pick up the colors in the next row. So row three, chain one turn. This side that we're looking at is the right side. This is the pretty side that will be the front, this side right here that you see. So we don't want to bring any of those tails to the front side now. We're going to have everything on the back side, just as they are now. We're going to have four white single crochets. So insert my hook into the first stitch and complete a single crochet. I want four white, so I have three here. Then I'll insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Now this is the first half of the fourth white one. I want to switch to the teal. So I'm going to drop the white to the back. I'm holding the tension with my index finger and then I'm grabbing the teal yarn. There's two ends. This one uh, to the left is the short tail end that we started. We don't want that one. That's going to be weaved in later. We want the working one, the one that's coming from the ball. And even though there is a stitch here before the teal, it's okay. I'm going to yarn over with the teal and pull it through. And I want to naturally pull it so it lays flat. It doesn't bunch up. And then I'll crochet over that in a minute. So there is a stitch here that we're skipping because there's an extra white stitch here. We just pulled over the teal and pulled it through naturally. And then we'll single crochet into that white stitch. And when we did that, we crocheted over the tail. So now it's held in place and it's not bunching the fabric. And we'll continue working. We want six teal single crochets. I'm not finishing my sixth one because I'm going to switch to white now. 
I'm going to hold the tension with my index finger, drop the teal, then I'm going to come to the back and I'm going to pull this white. Now if you're if you can see it, the teal is on the left side and the white is on the bottom of that. I'm just going to pick up the white. I'm going to yarn over with it and pull through. And then I'm going to finish single crocheting across by working four single crochets in white. That's the end of row three. Row three was four white, six teal, and four white. For row four, chain one and turn. Our tails are on this side that's facing us, so when we drop our yarn, we'll bring it to the front. It's worked exactly the same as row three, so four white single crochets. I work the first half of my fourth one and I bring that yarn to the front. And I'm holding it with my thumb, holding the tension. I have tension on with my index finger and I have tension with my thumb on the working yarn that I just dropped. And right underneath my next stitch is the teal. I'm going to pick that up. on my hook, yarn over, and pull through. And now I'm just going to single crochet into each of those teal single crochets. And it doesn't matter if you go to the left of the tail that you just um, picked up or if you go to the right of your tail. If you go to the right, it's going to hold it in place and cover it up more. If you go to the left, you might have a tail small tail float that you'll see here but you're only going to see it from this right side or I'm sorry from this wrong side when you flip it over you won't see it at all so that's up to you if you go to the right you'll crochet over it if you go to the left you'll have a little float but it's only visible from this wrong side I'm going to continue across I want six teal single crochets Here's my sixth one. I'm holding the tension with my index finger. Then I'm taking the working yarn and I'm pulling it to the front and I'm holding the tension there. Then I'm going to grab this white. And when I do this, I switch from holding the tension of the yarn with my right thumb to holding it with my left. And then I yarn over with the white and I pull it through naturally so it doesn't bunch up the fabric. And then I'm going to single crochet into that stitch. And again, it doesn't matter if you do it from the left side or from the right side. Then I'll single crochet into the next three stitches. And there's row four complete with four white, six teal, and four white. Now the planter and the teal yarn is done, but I'm not going to fasten off this yarn. I'm going to leave it on there so I can pick it up later and surface slip stitch around. I could fasten off a really long tail end, but I'm just going to leave it on there so I don't have to guess how much yarn I'm going to need. I'm going to chain one and turn. Row five is five white. And I'm working just the first half of my fifth one. Now I'm going to introduce green. So let me put this down for a second. I'm creating a loop here with a short tail end to weave in. And I'm going to put this loop on my hook. 
and pull it through. And I'm pulling the white down so it's normal tension and the short green end I'm dropping to the back. And now I'm going to work six green single crochets. So I'm still holding the tension of the yarn. I'm doing it on the back side because that's where the tails are so that it keeps this loop the same as all the rest of them. So normally you see me holding it with my thumb on this side, but because the tail ends are all on the back, I'm holding it with my middle finger and my ring finger here. And after the first stitch has worked, you don't have to hold that tension anymore. So I worked five white single crochets, then I joined yarn, the green yarn, and I've worked one, two, three, four, five, and I started the sixth single, single crochet. And now I'm going to switch to white. So I'm holding the tension here with my index finger. And then I'll just pick up the white that is right underneath where my green is. Pull it through. Yarn over, pull it through. And I'll finish it off with three white. There we have row five, five white single crochets, six green ones, and three white. Chain one and turn. It's two white single crochets. So there's the second half, the first half of my second one, and I'm bringing this white yarn to the front here and I'm dropping it then two green so I'll pick up this green and you can see that the green is like two stitches over from where we are right now we're going to yarn over and naturally pull it not too tight not too loose and now when we work our next single crochet which will go into that white stitch from the previous row insert our hook into that stitch we're crocheting over that green float yarn over pull through and complete your single crochet you're crocheting on top of that green float you're not even going to notice it and now insert your hook into the next stitch and again, if you do it to the left, you'll have a little float there. If you do it to the right, like I just did, you're going to cover it up. You won't, you won't notice it at all. Otherwise, it'll look just like this teal one down on the bottom. I've done two white and two green. Now I need a white. And I'm going to put this down for a second. I'm not going to use this white that I have over here that I just finished because I'm going to need that to work upwards on this side. The white part that we're working now is the center. Um, I think it's this side right here. It's the center part so we're going to add another white here that we're going to use. And I already have at the end I have a white and at the beginning I have a white so I need to now fasten off one of these whites so I can reattach it here where I need to work my next stitch the easiest one to fasten off is the tail that's coming from the center of the ball so that's what I'm gonna go for and I'm going to fasten off a long tail so I'm gonna pull it from the center pull it pull it so I have a long tail to work with and then I'll fasten it off and the one that I pulled from the center 
is this beginning, this one that I just finished working with. So that's what this long tail will be. I'll continue working from this long tail there until I run out and then I'll reattach another yarn. And now I have this center pull free so I can make a loop and put it on my hook. Then I'll pull my green tail to the front with the rest of them and my short tail end to the front. And I'm gonna work the first half of a single crochet And now, before I continue, you can turn this long tail end that you created into a bobbin by you basically roll it, uh, roll it up some sort like this, and you tie it off in the center so that this doesn't get tangled and so that it's easy to work with. I am not going to do that. I just drop it and work with it as it comes. But if you create a bobbin, it will be easier to work with because it won't tangle. And now I want four green. So I only have one green right now, and that's the one I just finished working previously. So I'm going to grab the tail end from the other side of the ball. And I'm going to add it here. And I'll bring all my tail ends to the front. And now I'm going to work four green single crochets. So there's three and a half. And now I'll pick up my white yarn. I'm going to drop the green right here to the front and pick up that white tail. And I'm just going to naturally pull it over. And I'm going to finish off this row with five white. So for this row, row 6, I had 2 white, 3 green, 1 white, 4 green, and 5 white single crochets. Then I'll chain 1 and turn. And I want to point out that my yarn is tangling because I have all these uh, tail ends going and I've been turning and turning and turning. This is a good time to go ahead and surface slip stitch the teal and fasten it off. And I say now because you want to have enough fabric so that you can work that surface slip stitch, which I do. I have two extra rows. So I just pulled up a big um, loop here with the white so I don't lose it. And then I just dropped it. I'm going to find out where the teal is coming out from. And I'm going to insert my hook right down the center of the fabric. So the teal is coming out from the back of right here and I just inserted my hook right into the center of that teal stitch and I'll pick that teal yarn up from I inserted my hook from the right side I'm going to go to the wrong side of the fabric and I'm going to pick uh, the teal up yarn over on my hook and pull it through the fabric. So it's currently on the wrong side with all the rest of the tails. I'm yarning over with my hook and I'm pulling to the right side. And now I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch working from the top down from the right side of my fabric insert into the next stitch. I don't want to work over any of the other tails so I'm moving them out of the way. And I'm just going to yarn over with the teal, pull it up through the fabric, 
there's two loops and then I'll pull it up through that first loop on my hook insert it down into the next stitch to the wrong side yarn over with the teal pull it up through the fabric two loops continue to pull it through the loop that's on the hook insert into the next stitch through the fabric to the wrong side yarn over with the teal yarn, um, pull through two loops continue to pull it through the loop on the hook and I'll just continue working across I don't want to trap any of the tail ends so that they're freely available for when I need them so just move them out of the way and continue. See, uh, this is a surface slip stitch. I've worked across the row and now I'm going to take the shape of it downward. I'm just going to insert into a nearby stitch. So right now I'm going to the one right underneath it. You can either go over here to the white to the left or you can go down and I'm going down so that I don't catch, if I work to go to the left, now I have this white that you will see, and I don't want to see it. I want my teal to just be the shape. So I'm going down, pick up that teal and pull it through, and now I'm starting to round this edge. I'm going to turn the fabric so I can keep working downwards. I don't want to go directly down, I want to come over and then I'll work across and I'm on the inner side of those stitches so here's the edge of the stitches I'm not working on the edge because you'll see that white I'm just working right underneath it into those stitches So just continue the same way, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through both loops. Now I'll turn my fabric a little bit and I'm going to work into the next stitch. I'm just following the shape of the teal and now I'm going to work to the stitch, uh, into the stitch on the left. and I'm back to the beginning so I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch now not this hole that's right here actually you could work into either of them it doesn't matter and now I'll fasten off that teal yarn now the teal will not get caught in my work as I'm um, working across I'm just pulling up with my hook on that teal yarn loop that I just finished so it breaks it then I'll insert my hook into the same stitch I just did and I'll pull that yarn tail to the back side now I've lost a couple white stitches here so I'm gonna go ahead and work those even though I pulled up that tail end it wasn't enough So for row eight, uh, row seven, I'm sorry, chain one and turn. Now you still have yarn tangle, but it's nothing like what it was becoming with the teal yarn because now you have less ends. You can stop and weave in all the short ends that you are um, from where you tied on your yarn if you want to clear up the back side a little bit. I'm just going to keep going though. I'm going to start with five white. So there's four and a half. Then I will drop my white and pick up the green.
and I'm pulling it through the loop. Four green single crochets. So there's three and a half. Going to drop the green, pick up the white, and I, I don't want the white on the left, I want the white underneath where I just dropped my green. And one single crochet in the white. Now pick up the next green. Pull it through. I'm going to work three greens. And then I'll drop the green and I'll pick up the white that's on the left side. Pull it through and work one single crochet. That's row seven, five white four green, one white, three green, and one white single crochet. Row eight, chain one, and turn. One white single crochet, and then I'll drop that yarn tail to the front side. Then I'll pick up the green, and I'm going to work three greens. My yarn is tangling here. And that's because my yarn is not wrapped. I don't have bobbins going. I just have strands of yarn. So if you want to avoid this, you can create bobbins with your yarn and fasten off. I'm also working from both sides of my balls of yarn but I can avoid this tangle by cutting off long strands of yarn to work with and creating bobbins. So I worked one white single crochet and I dropped that. I'm picking up the green to work three single crochets in the green. So there's two and a half, dropping the green to the front, picking up the white. And pull it through. I'm going to work one white single crochet. Then I'll drop that white to the front and I'll pick up the next green yarn. Not the one that I just finished with, but the next one. Yarn over, pull through. Now I'm going to work six green. So there's five and a half. I'm going to pick up this white first. And then I'm bringing the green underneath. And it doesn't matter, as long as you pull it to the back before you work the next stitch, it's going to be three white stitches. And there's row eight, which was one white, three green, one white, six green, and three white. Row nine, chain one and turn two white single crochets. So one and a half, drop the white, pick up the green. Yarn over, pull through, two green. Now I'm going to introduce another white. I'm going to put this down for a second here. What I'm about to work now is the second arm of the cactus. 
this white part over here on the left, that's this part in between the arm, and the part I'm about to work now is this right center part. I need to add another white yarn here. So I have already fastened off this one on the left, so I could reattach the one on the in the middle. The one in the middle I'm close to finishing with because it's just for a couple stitches here in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten off that one. But I'm still going to do it with a long skein, a long tail, so I can continue to work with it for however long I need to. And then fasten off. And I'll take that tail end that I just cut and I'll make a loop and I'll put it on my hook and pull it through. Tighten the green up to normal tension. Drop the tail ends to the back and now I have the working yarn here and I'm going to work one single crochet. Now I'm going to set this down for a moment. I need to attach another green because I have on the left one arm, on the center is the center part, the body, and then I'm working on this right side. So I just used that green for the right arm. I need another green for the body here. And I'm going to pull a, a long tail from the left arm because I just started the right one so I need more yarn for that one. I'm going to pull the, the tail and for the right side or for the left side I'm pulling a long tail then I'll fasten off and I'll continue to work from this long tail for that left arm until I need to reattach yarn again. And here's the end I just cut. I'm making a loop and then I'll pull it through my hook, through the loop on, on the hook there. And I'm going to work four green then I will drop it, pick up the white and work one white then I'm dropping that to pick up the green the next green one and I'm going to work three green and one white that is row nine two white two green, one white, four green, one white, three green, one white. And all those yarn ends that I we, that I fastened off a long tail, those are now floating around over here and have the ability to get tangled. So if you want to take a moment to make these into pretty bobbins, go for it. It will make it easier to work with so it doesn't tangle. But as of right now, it's really not tangling because I fastened off the yarn and restarted, so it's untangled. Row 10, I'm going to chain 1 and turn. Five, sing uh, 5 white single crochets. This green down here on the end, I'm finished with. I don't need that one so I can fasten off 
and you can go ahead and weave that in if you want. I'm going to wait, but we're done with that left arm. I'm going to drop the white, pick up the next screen, pull it through, and I will complete four green single crochets. So there's three and a half, drop it, pick up the white. And work one white single crochet. And drop the white and pick up the green. Pull it through. Working three green single crochets. Then drop the green, pick up the white for one white single crochet. That is row 10, five white, four green, one white, three green and one white single crochet. Chain one and turn. Row 11 is one white single crochet. Three green. Then one white. four green and be careful not to pull the green tail that you just finished working but pull the next green tail and I'm going to finish it with five white Row 11 was one white, three green, one white, four green, and five white single crochets. Chain one and turn, five white single crochets. Then four green. One white, then three green, When I yarn over and pull here, it will want to smush this fabric in. Just make sure not to pull too tight. Um, I got my thumb here so that the fabric stays flat and don't pull too tight and the fabric won't bunch up. Then chain one and turn. Before I turn, row 12, five white, four green, one white, three green, one white. And it may look a little bit wonky to you. To me it looks like it matches the other um, the other edge. When we work the final border you won't even notice if it looks uneven. Row 13 is six white. Drop the white to pick up the green to work two greens. And then I'll pick up the next white and I'm finishing this off with six white. Row 
Row 13 was 6 white, 2 green, and 6 white. For row 14, chain 1 and turn. The whole row is worked in white. I have a short tail end here of the white, so I'm going to have to attach another um, tail end here. I'm not fastening off my green yet because I'm going to surface slip stitch in the green and I'm not sure which side I'm going to take it from. I want to make sure I'm taking it from one that's coming out of the working yarn. So I think they both are, but I'm just going to wait until I finish this row. So I'm just going to single crochet up until I can't and I need to attach another, the other skein or another tail. I think that's all I'm going to do. That way I have enough to weave in. And I'm going to set it down for a moment and see where my other whites are coming from. So this one down here that I had fastened off earlier, I'm going to go ahead and fasten off a shorter tail so I can weave that in and get rid of this excess yarn. And then I have two tail ends here on the left. One is from the space in between the arm and the other one is from the, the left side. So I'm going to fasten off both of them. And I'm just going to reattach one of them. The one that's coming from the center ball because that's the easiest to work with. And I'm going to finish out the row. This one is just 14 white single crochets. That's row 14. You need to decide if you want to do your edge, your final border edge in the white, the same color that you're working with, or if you want to switch, you could do it in any color. I did mine in green. So I did my first one in green, so I'm going to go ahead and work the second one the same way. So I'm going to take out that last single crochet and just do half so I can pull through green. I think I'm going to pull this green up. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fasten it off and reattach it. I don't like the flute. Then I'll chain one and turn. I'm going to fasten off the white because I no longer need that. I have two tails currently attached. I have the green that I just attached and then I have this green that's in the center. I'm going to leave that one in the center there so that I can surface slip stitch around the center. But I'm going to go ahead and do my edging first. And you can do your edging with single crochet all the way around. I'm doing mine with reverse single crochet. I'm going to single crochet into the first stitch as normal. When we work our edging, our stitches into the edge, we're working one stitch per row and we're working it right into the edge of that stitch. So here's our next row. I'm working right into that edge, picking up two loops on my hook. Then the next stitch I will work, here's the next row, insert my hook un into that stitch, 
there's still two stitches there that I'm picking up on my hook. Then I work into the next row, pick up the edge of that stitch, two stitches are on my hook. And we continue working one single crochet per row. Insert my hook into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through. I have two loops on my hook. I want to hold the previous stitch with my thumb and my middle finger, yarn over and pull through. Insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops are on the hook. Hold that previous stitch with my index finger, or with my middle finger and my thumb on my left hand, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, place my middle finger and my thumb, and I place these fingers here so that I make sure the working tail is to the right when I yarn over and pull through. Otherwise, if it's on the left, it, it won't lay flat like it is currently. It'll create bulkiness on top of that stitch. So when you're comfortable, you don't need to hold it with your thumb and your middle finger anymore. You just want to make sure that that working yarn is to the right of that previous stitch. You don't want it to come over here on the left. Now I have one stitch left here on the bottom. I'm going to work my first single crochet as normal. Then I'll chain one. Then I'm going to use my middle finger and my uh, my middle finger and my thumb to hold that stitch. Then I'm going to insert my hook back into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. In this corner, we have a single crochet a chain one and a single crochet and we want to work every corner like this so that it's an increase I'm turning my fabric to work onto the bottom the opposite side of the beginning chain and I'm gonna work it exactly the same way insert my hook into the next stitch yarn over pull through two loops on my hook make sure that working tail end is on the right side of the previous stitch yarn over and pull through Now I have one stitch left and we're going to work it the same way, increasing. So work the first stitch as normal, chain one, hold the stitch, insert my hook back into the same stitch and work another single crochet. And this tail end here is not secure so that hole is going to continue to pull out and get bigger until you weave it in. You can just pull it, hold your fabric and pull it and it'll close up. It'll open back up until it's weaved in. Now I'm going to continue working up the next side the same way. One single crochet per row right into the edge picking up two loops.
I have one more stitch left. Oops. I'm going to turn this. I have one more stitch left here, which is the corner uh, stitch from this top row. That's where I'm going to work my increase. Then I'm going to continue working all the way across as normal. Now I'm back to the first stitch. I'm going to single crochet into the same stitch as the first. And then I'm going to slip stitch join to the first stitch. And you might be asking, how do I do that? These two loops that you see, that's where I want to insert my hook into. Yarn over, pull through everything like normal, and fasten off. I pulled up on the loop to break it, and then I'll insert my hook back into this seam stitch from the wrong side, and pull that tail end through. And now there's just one thing left before, well you could weave in your ends now. I'm going to go ahead and surface slip stitch. And you don't have to surface slip stitch. This is the way it looks when it's surface slip stitched. I think it is a lot more defined than how this looks here on the right. It's a little bit more jagged and uneven. This is what I started with, and then I tried the surface slip stitching, and I think it, it really defines the, the cactus shape, which is what I wanted. I enjoyed a lot more. It looks more clean and finished. So you can stop here if you want and weave in your ends, and you have a cactus coaster. But I'm going to go one step further and surface slip stitch around the shape of the cactus. So I'm going to find where that green yarn is coming from the, um, from the ball, which is up here. So right around here. I'm going to insert my hook from the front down through the stitch from the right side down to the wrong side, right next to where the tail end is. Yarn over and pull it up. Now there's a loop on my hook. And I'm going to follow the shape of the cactus without going over the white spots. Because if I were to work across it, you would see it underneath. I just want to take the shape of it. So I'm going to follow this inside edge all the way down, then all the way back up. So I'm going to insert my hook diagonally into the next stitch diagonally into the next stitch down from the right side to the wrong side pick up a yarn over pull through there's two loops on my hook I'm going to continue pulling it through the first loop I'm going to turn my fabric so I can work across insert my hook into the next stitch underneath where I just worked insert it in come out on the wrong side yarn over, pull through the fabric, there's two loops, continue pulling that loop through the loop that's on the hook.
all these tail ends I'm gonna pull them up and out of the way so I don't want to work over them I've worked down the side of the cactus then I'm going to work into the next stitch to the left now I've come downwards when I work on the arm I want to work on the inside of those stitches so I'm going to go right into the next stitch on the right and I have tail ends in my way again so I'm just going to pull them out of my way so I don't work over them they just add bulkiness here then I'm going to go into the next stitch up And the next stitch up, and then the next stitch up, and now I've worked across the bottom on the inside of the stitches. Now I'm going to work across the top, insert into the stitch on the left, move the tail ends out of my way, then the next stitch on the left. Then I'm going to turn my fabric to the right so I can work down the arm. Go to the stitch on the left. And go down to the next stitch on the left. And then I'm going to turn my fabric to the right again. Well, I'm just following the shape. I don't want to crochet over the white part because then you'll see it. I want to take the shape. So I'm going to go to the left now. And then the next stitch, um, it's like diagonally. And then to the left. And again to the left. And this is kind of where the planter is. I've worked around the arm. Now I'm going to work straight across the bottom edge of the cactus. Just following the shape and the stitches that are there. So now I've worked across the bottom, turn my fabric to the right, I'm going to work diagonally one stitch, clear all these tail ends, and I'll work to the left one stitch, and If I go over here diagonally, you're going to see this white stitch, so I need to go one more over to the right, then turn my fabric so I can work around the, the arm. Just keeping the shape, follow along the inside of the stitch. Then turn to work across the top. And turn to work on the left side of the arm.
Work around the bottom. Clearing these tail ends out of my way. And I'm working up the center. And then I'm just going to work around the top till I get back to the beginning. And now the next stitch is the first stitch. So I'll just insert my hook into that first stitch and surface slip stitch one more time and then fasten off. Pull up on that loop to break it. Insert from the back to the front into that first stitch and pull that tail end through. And now we're going to weave in our ends. But take a moment and just look at that beautiful cactus that you made. And it's so defined with that surface slip stitching edge. It really adds a lot to that finished look. Take your pick, whichever one you're going to weave in, just weave them into the color. So the green, I'm going to work into the green area, the white ones I'll work into the white areas. I like to do three passes. I work, I don't pick up a whole stitch, so this is the stitch. If I was going to pick it up, I would go under all of it and pick up that stitch. I break the stitch in half. I go right down the center of it to break it in half. And then I weave under several stitches. And when I come out, I also don't pick up the whole stitch. I, I come out through the center of the stitch, and by breaking the loops, it helps to catch my yarn. I'm going to show you one more awesome trick. My secret weapon when I work with cotton yarn. Jewelry pliers. I keep these in my crochet bag and every time I, if it's really bulky or it's tough to work through, I pull out my jewelry pliers. Just make sure the eye of the needle is facing you so you can see down the center there as opposed to sideways where you can't see in. You want it to be flat with the eye facing you. Grab the top of the needle, hold the fabric with your left hand, and gently pull through. And I say gently because if it gets stuck and you pull too hard, the yarn will break the eye of your needle. And I've had that happen and it tore through my fabric. So just be gentle when you pull through. That's one pass. And then I go into a nearby stitch. I don't pick up the whole stitch, I break it in half. And I go right back through those stitches I just worked. And if it's tough for you to pull through with your fingers, just grab your jewelry pliers. Hold the fabric with your left hand and pull that needle through. It makes it so easy. It really saves the inside of your thumb. So that's only two passes, but I feel, uh, I feel pretty secure about it. I'm going to do three anyways because that's my magic number. But if you feel secure after two, you can fasten off. Or if you don't feel secure enough after three, work a fourth one. And then just fasten off. I'm going to 
show you just this one right here I'm pulling this yarn out because it got stuck in there when I was surface slip stitching so I'm just pulling it out and then I'll weave that in later I want to show you just this one last one and then I'll weave in the other ends off camera this is where we fastened off from our um, reverse single crochet sometimes I get the, uh, it lines up and matches perfectly. Sometimes it's a little bit off, like today it looks a little bit off here. So I'm just going to wrap it around. I'm coming from the wrong side right now, coming into that same stitch, the first stitch, around the side. And it kind of just adds to that finished. Uh, edge of the stitch and I'll come back around and I'll go into the next stitch and I'm just filling in this space that's right here just so it doesn't look like there's as big of a gap there and then I'll turn it to the wrong side and I'll weave it in and when I weave it in I'm gonna weave in into the into the outside edge let's see I'm coming back through the direction I just worked in and then I'll come down through that the edge and so my stitches stay in the green area you can um, if they get into the white area it's fine as long as it's just on this layer that's facing you so that when you flip it to the right side you don't see it coming through And it's the same way as when we're weaving normally. We don't weave through the whole thing so you see the needle from the right side. You weave just through the, the layer that's facing you. Let me turn this. And then I'll just fasten off as normal. And now that edge is, um, I fastened off and I, my edge looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and take time off camera to weave in all the rest of my ends. But here is the finished coaster. I am not sure I would love to add, just like on my coffee mug, these little pink flowers. So I was thinking I might add one here on the left arm because there's some space there. I might embroider it on there. Or maybe surface slip stitch. I haven't decided yet, so if I do, I will come back on and show how to do that. The free crochet pattern for this is at ilovenots.com and please smash that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.